And hello everyone, welcome back to the Eflexonics show. This is a Tootcast. Tootcast stands for Totally Organized Original Tutorial. Glad to have you back again. Today we're going to be talking about something uh, that is very near and dear to my heart that I use on a continuous basis in the um, studio. It is called Camtasia Studio 6. Now, um, Camtasia Studio 7 is out now. It is an upgrade. I'm going to have to break down and buy the upgrade, but this is probably the most powerful professional suite of video editing and audio editing tools for the PC there is out there. Let me show you how simple it is to use. Now let me explain a little bit about what it does and what it does not. Camtasia Studio is just the perfect vehicle for any podcaster, for anyone that has a story to tell, for anyone that has, uh, for example, wants to put on an informational class or get their message out. This is probably the best thing that you can buy if you're a podcaster and you need to get your message out there and across. Now, here's some exciting stuff. Camtasia Studio 6, when I bought it a year ago, it was $299 Canadian. I live in Canada. Um, Camtasia 7 is still $299 and it has the capacity to do a lot more high-definition work. You can go to, Cam to TechSmith's page, and I'll put the link on at the bottom of this um, podcast, and you can get a full-blown 30-day trial for absolutely free, absolutely nothing to try Camtasia Studio 7. And I would highly suggest that you give this program a go. Once you try it for a couple of weeks, I'll almost guarantee you, if you're a podcaster, you'll want to buy this program. Let's take a look and see how easy it is. Right now, I've got two applications of Camtasia Studio open. I've got one that's recording the screen and one that's recording the front end of Camtasia. So let's show you how easy it is to uh, edit uh, video and audio in Camtasia. Anytime that you want to bring anything into Camtasia, all you have to do is go to the Add section here and click on Import Media whether it's a video, whether it's uh, music, whether it's a JPEG, a picture, whatever it is. So we were at the Bakerview Eco Dairy the other day, and we just had such a great time. Let's... Where is my... Ah, there's my sandwich movie. They made a great sandwich there, so I'm going to use the sandwich movie. So as soon as you double left-hand click it, it'll bring the video into the clip bin. Now all that is, is it loads it into a staging area where you can start to bring it down here. And let me explain that. So, for example, if you wanted to bring in another picture or a theme song or narration, you'd just click Import Media and it would, it would end up in the same area here as the clip bin. Now, how do you get this video down to here so we can start editing it? Simply press and hold down your left mouse button and click and drag it all the way down here. Then let it up. Now, when you see the Editing Dimensions page, you'll see a lot of choices available to you. If you have a blog and you want to go 400 by 300 on the video, you just click that. If you're making a CD 800 by 600, you can choose that one. If you want DVD ready, a little bit uh, different format, you can go 720 by 480. It even does HD at 1280 by 720. Now this happened to be shot in HD, but I'm going to stick with web at 640 by 480. Most of the time, if you're podcasting, you want to keep it at 640 by 480 simply because of the room it takes, the resources it takes um, to store it, and the time it takes to unload the video and to play it for people. If it's a real big video or 1270 or, or a high bandwidth, it's going to take a lot of time for it to load and people might get impatient. So I use a lot of 640 by 480 work and I save it for the web. Now, did you notice it also got, it has a YouTube. Now, you can, you can customize the YouTube size, whichever you want. So we're going to keep aspect ratio. And really, this button, all it means is, throughout the entire video editing, editing process, it's going to lock in 640 by 480. So you click on OK. And what it does is it locks the audio and video. Now, take a look at the lower left-hand corner. You see this little lock here? It says click to lock track. Well, if we want to lock track and we want to make sure that nothing influences it, 
So we make a mistake on it, we just simply click to lock track. And that locks the video and the audio. Now, here's an interesting thing. Let's unlock it. Now, if I want to influence just the audio portion of this movie, if I want to make it uh, stronger or weaker, how do I do that? Because there's one lock for video and one lock for audio. So what they're, they, right now they're combined. Take a look at this. You take your mouse up to this little glowing dot here and just rest it there. It says click to unlock audio one from video track one. Now that's not a bad thing because when I left click on it, it says, do you want to permanently unlock audio one from video one? Now what that means is, as soon as I click this, there's going to be two locks that's going to show here. And I can lock the video or lock the audio simultaneously or one or the other and while working on the other so I don't influence the other one. So watch what happens when I click yes. See that? There's a lock up here for the video and there's a lock down here for the audio. So if I want to make sure that nothing happens to my video while I'm influencing the audio, I just lock it down. Now, no matter what happens, Nothing is going to influence that, that uh, video. So let's go down here. Now, how do we influence an audio track? You simply left click once here, and you go over to these little buttons here, and just rest your mouse here, and it says volume up 25% or volume down 25%. Let's click on the volume up 25% once and see what happens. And you'll see what happens here to, this, to these fuzzy bars. You ready? Okay, one. See how they went slightly bigger? We'll do it again. Two. And we'll do it again, and we'll do it one more time, so four times. So you see, what it's done is it's increased the level of noise or the audio track so you can hear it better, all without influencing the video track. So say, for example, uh, oh, this is another thing. See this little green guy here? Well, there's always going to be, as soon as you put your mouse on it, it turns red. There's always going to be two of these. It's one for the beginning and one for the end. Let me explain how these work. If you click and drag one over, lower uh, left hand mouse button, you see this light blue area here? Well, this is the beginning of the influence and this is the end of the influence, right in here. So if I wanted to influence this part, this portion of audio one, all I'd have to do is single right click my mouse button and I have choices. It says remove from timeline, cut selection, crop to selection and audio enhancement. So if I wanted to completely get rid of this light blue, I would just click cut selection and it would be gone, but I don't want to do that. So I'll just click here and anytime you want these to go to the left hand side, these little start and stop guys, you just go to the beginning of the movie, previous clip, right? And it will return both of them. Okay, so now that we've influenced our audio, why don't we take a look at audio enhancements? This is one of my favorite parts of the program. If you take a look and click on audio enhancements, it says even out volume levels and removes background noise. This is probably one of the most time-saving features of this entire program. Take a look at what it does. It says dynamic range control evens out volume levels. Now you see the representation of audio track here. It's squiggly and it's all over the place. What happens is when you click here, it takes all those nasty high points and low points and combines them. It, it actually uses a compression algorithm and it cleans up the sound. Now this will be beneficial to you probably 90% of the time. Sometimes it doesn't work, but almost all the time it does. Now watch what happens down here when I click even out the volume levels. You're going you're gonna to be amazed. You ready? Okay, now remember, it's, it looks like, a, like a, a ragtag pipe cleaner, but you see these high points here? Way up and way down. You don't want that in your audio when you're doing a professionally polished, finished podcast. So let's click here, and you see what happened here? It compressed the algorithm, it compressed the sound waves, and it balanced them out, and it almost, it's like it clips off the highest point so you don't get all the highs and the lows. You get a contiguous flow of music or narration or whatever you whatever have you. And it cleans up all the way down. So now, to find out if you liked it, go back to the beginning of the clip and then play your movie. And you see how this is playing? So you'll be able to listen to your audio 
at the same time as watching your video. And if you like the way the audio has, has turned out, then you don't have to do any further manipulation. Just stop it, go back to the beginning. Now remember, if you make a mistake, say for example, I've clicked even out volume levels and I click OK to lock that in. If I think, you know, I want to go back here and I want to manipulate some more, I want to make it uh, perhaps louder, all you have to do is go to the audio enhancements, unclick it, click here, and remember, we'll go back to here. It says volume up by 25%. Let's do that. Let's increase that. We can go way up. And then we can even out the volume levels. Now again, watch what happens to all this. See this, this one right here? It's way, way up there. Now, it'll, you'll, you'll notice, see what happened? It clipped it probably 50%. It was way up here, and now it's way down here. And the sound quality has been improved exponentially. So after you've done, you just click OK, and then listen to your movie again. After you've get that done, and you say, you know what, that's the perfect way I want that soundtrack to come about, you just simply bring it back here to the beginning of the movie. Now, so we've got, we've talked about how we bring a video from here down to here in order to edit it, and we've talked about how to edit your audio. Now, let's unlock this, because I'll show you something interesting. If you have any of these choices locked, any of the two, you see all these choices up here? They will not be available to you until you unlock this lock here. Now watch what I, when I unlock this, these choices will come back up. See that? Now, we can add a zoom and pan, we can add callouts, we can add transitions, captions, flash. See, this is interesting, flash, quiz, and survey. I personally have not done a flash, quiz, and survey, but I understand the process is very, very easy. So, for example, if you're teaching people about electronics, or car mechanics, or plumbing, you can have an online flash, quiz, and survey right in your video. So let's take a look at what we call callouts. Now, callout simply means that we're going to put writing right in our video somewhere, right? And when you go here, this is your work area here, you only have two choices. Rest your mouse there and it says add a callout or delete this callout. So let's add the callout. Now, over here is your work, work area, right? Take a look here. It is in the form of an arrow and that is where your text is going to appear. You see these light gr uh, green right here? The light green border? Well, you can make that any size you want simply by holding the left mouse button down and clicking and dragging it all over. Now you've got a huge arrow. Now look at all the choices you've got. You've got this arrow, you've got this arrow, you've got, you can do anything you want. Now, take a look at the master selection list. You've got a two-sided arrow, a curved arrow, an indented arrow, a blur callout, all these, you've got a notepad, you've got a bubble callout, square callout. One of my favorites that I use almost all the time is called a text callout. It doesn't have to mention. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to manipulate the green borders here because I want to be able to put some writing in here. So, right here it'll say text Arial, so I'm going to use the Arial font and it'll give me the size and it'll give me the color of the font as well. So let's start typing in here and we'll call it Rick's Sandwich. All right, now here's where we can influence the fonts. Click your left mouse button and drag it all through the font. So now when it's highlighted like that, you know you can influence it. Look what happens here. I can go to 36 inch font. I can change the color to red. Ooh, and let's bold it. Now for the placement inside the box, I can put it like that. I can put it centered and I can put it to the right hand side as well. I can influence the writing this way, up top. I can influence the writing in the middle, and I can influence the writing in the bottom. So we'll do this. W keep in mind now, when you're influencing the, the font, don't put it at the black bars here, because that won't show. What I would do is I would bring this down right to where the actual video filming is, 
A lot of people will make that mistake. They'll put writing up here and then it won't appear properly and they'll say, well, what's going on? That's the reason. Just manipulate these green and see how tight you can go with these green guys. You can just bring it up right here, just as small as you want. Okay? All right, so now let's take a look. Let's take a look at the properties for this. It says fade in and fade out. Now that's self explanatory, but you notice how the fade in doesn't have a check mark because the reason it doesn't have a check mark is because we've put this text right at the beginning of the movie. There is no room for fade in, and that'll give you a, a second countdown over here, but there is room for a fade out. You see that? It's got a one second fade out. Now let's go down here. If you can take a look at this light blue little triangle here, that is the one second fade out. And watch what happens when I move the cursor. It moves this cursor and it makes it longer. That is a rep representation of time, this little light blue triangle, for the fade out. Now what happens if I want to put a fade in? Well, let's try. We'll click on fade in and we get a message that says, the fade duration extends beyond the beginning of the clip. Do you want to shift the call out? So all that means is, as soon as I click yes, it's going to click, it's going to shift this call out to the right hand side to give at least a little bit of room to give a fade in. So let's see how far it pushes it over. You see that? Now you see there is your fade in. It's not a five second fade in like this one. It is a one second fade in. Now what happens if we want to extend that fade in? I can't extend it anymore because it's only pushed over so much. All you have to do is put your left mouse button down and bring it over there. Now you've got more room for a fade in. So let's go up to a five second fade in. You see what happened here? So now you've got a five second fade in here and then for these few moments that that text is going to be really crystal clear and then it's going to have a five second fade out. So let's go back and take a look at our movie. You ready? Okay. Now, whenever you're finished doing anything in your work area, make sure you click finished. Otherwise, it may not hold. So we'll click finished, okay? And we'll start the movie. So here we go. We're fading in. See this? Rick Sandwich. It's fading it. Now we're really crystal clear on the font and now we're beginning to fade out. So we're going to have a five second fade out. See that? Okay, so let's stop it there. Now let's do another call out. So I'm going to add another call out and we're going to go, hmm, good. <laughs> and it was good. <laughs> Now, when you go back to the callout, it's going to remember the last thing you did. The text callout, it's going to remember the color, it's going to remember the font size, and it's going to remember the font itself and the placement within the, vi the video itself. Okay? It's going to give you a five second uh, fade in and a five second fade out. Now remember, you can influence these no matter what you've, what you've got going on, you've got the room now. The one thing that you want to make sure is you see we're going to run into problems down here. You see this fade out here? Well, it's going to be fading out the same time that this guy, this new one, is going to be fading in. No problem. Take your left mouse button and just shift it over until the fade out on this one stops completely and the fade in in this one will start. You ready? So let's go back to the beginning and we'll do the movie again. Okay, so we've got a fade in. Rick's sandwich right here is fading in and it's crystal clear now for the format, for the font. Now it's going to fade out for five seconds. Almost immediately after that, it's going to fade in on the new word. Okay, you see, mm, good, it's fading in. It's crystal clear here now for a couple of moments and it's going to fade out. Pretty slick, huh? Now, you'll notice that sometimes when we do the video, the video is a little jerky. Um, it, when you go to post-production, that means when you click on uh, Save Video As or, or Format Video As, that jerkiness will go away. It's because this was, was um, um, shot in a high definition. So there's a lot of uh, information that it has to process. But the lower the definition, like 640 by 480 if it was a camera, 
that it was shot, it would go a lot smoother. So at, remember the rule. After you do your fade in, your fade out, anything on your work area space, you just click finished and there you go. So now we've talked about how to get the video from here down here, how to unlock it so you have influence, you can influence the audio and will lock out the video or conversely, if you want to do something with the video, you can lock the audio. Now nothing will influence this audio, right? Okay, so and we've also talked about text callout. So we've done three things. We've done video, we've done audio, and we've done text callout. Very, very simple um, software program to use. You can also use transitions and I'm going to do another uh, podcast on transitions and captions and produce video ads. Now, when you get your video the way you want it to be, you click on produce video ads and it says start the production wizard to produce the current project. So let's click on that. Now it says, again, do you want to save it for the web? You can change it at this point, but I wouldn't. Once you make your decision on how you want to format it at the beginning, pretty well stick with it because I'll show you what happens if you make another choice. Say for example, I went from web to YouTube. It says selecting a different preset than the preset in project settings may cause the look of the video to appear different than previewing during editing. Do you wish to continue? Normally I do not. I'll always go with my original choice. It's going to go 640 by 480. It's going to be an MPEG-4 video movie file and it creates a high quality, low file size MP4 for playback on multiple browsers. This is probably the safest. So you click on next. It wants to give uh, a title, so we'll go sandwich. And there you go. And then it even tells you what folder. Now pay particularly close attention to the folder it's going to or you, you'll lose it. <laughs> you can always search for it in the computer to find it. Okay, so you ready? Just click next and it'll tell you all the information of what it's going to do. And then click finish to finish. And this is what you're going to see. See? Rendering project. That's all there is to it, folks. Thanks so much for coming. This is Rick Holland for eFlexonics, and I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you want to give us an email, give us an email at eFlexonics at gmail.com or simply drop us a comment at the bottom of this page. Thank you so much. See you again. Bye-bye.